This is the Advent message for Christmas Eve. I'm sure many of us remember when we were children, many Christmas Eves where we were excited, expectant of what Christmas Day may bring. Today we're going to hear from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to their own towns to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. I'm sure many of us remember many Happy Christmas with our families, with our friends. And those nativity plays we used to be in and we've watched with our children. But actually we've turned Christmas into a fairy tale. Take our nativity sets. We make sure the stable's all made nice and neat. And then we put Mary and Joseph and Jesus in a manger. Straighten them up. And then we have the shepherds. So we put the line of shepherds up and then we have three kings come in and we line them up all nice and neat. Then maybe we'll have a few angels and a star. Then maybe we'll throw in a few animals. But actually, for Mary and Joseph, this was no fairy tale. We hear in today's verse that Joseph was not yet married to Mary, and that would have not gone well with his family or friends. We also see that Mary, just a teenager, is due to give birth, and now they have to travel to Bethlehem be registered. Bethlehem was 90 miles from Nazareth and the roads would have been dusty, they wouldn't have been straight, there would have been rocks, wild animals, it wouldn't have been an easy journey. And in our nativity plays they arrive on a donkey but actually, there's nothing written in the scriptures about a donkey at all. They could well have walked the whole journey. Or maybe they thunder lift and got a lift on a camel. We don't know. But we presume they arrived on a donkey. But they could have walked. But even so, with a donkey, 90 miles on rough terrain would not have been an easy journey. And we find out when they get to Bethlehem, the place is heaving with people and there's nowhere to stay. And we know that they knock on doors and people say there's no room. There's a good chance that Joseph had some relatives in Bethlehem because that's his lineage. And would he would have visited those relatives in his lifetime. So it was a good chance that the doors he knocked on were actually relatives that he knew, but they had no room until someone said they can have the stable. Again, the stable, no fairy tale. It would have been musty, dusty, cockroaches maybe, certainly mice, maybe rats. Very smelly. Other animals live there. 
But Mary was happy to have someone to have a baby, but not the ideal birth plan. And then we find some strangers visit them. Some shepherds hear about them and they come to visit. These shepherds wouldn't have had time to go home and get changed. They come as they were, with their ragged clothes, smelly. Not the ideal people you'd want to visit your newborn baby. But Mary took on her heart all the things they said. And then we have the kings. Well, the kings didn't actually arrive for another year and a half to two years. And we have three of them because there's three gifts that we know of. But it possibly could have been as many as 10, 20, 30 kings, maybe more. And when they visited, Jesus would have been one and a half to two years old. And they would have been living in accommodation. And the star. Well, there's nothing written about the star at all until the kings come on the scene. So there's a good possibility that there wasn't even a star when Jesus was born. So we turn the horror story into a fairy tale. But there is good news because like all fairy tales, there is a happy ever after. Because Jesus came and he did what his father said to do. He came to die for us, for our sins. And he rose again in glory. So we can be in heaven and have eternal life with our God, our Father. So there is a happy ending to that horror story. I pray that this year, whatever family members you can meet with, you make the most of their company. Because most of us will have food, most of us will have entertainment, a warm fire, a house to live in. But there are some that will not have this comfort. And there are many this year that will be alone and more alone than normal because we can only have three families together. Many will be left out. So it'd be good to give them a thought this Christmas. Let us pray. Father God, I pray that we remember the ordeal that Mary and Joseph went through to give birth to the Son of Man, the Son of God. Father, I pray that this Christmas we will be filled with your peace, your love, your joy. Father, I pray this Christmas that we will remember those that Christmas will be no fairy tale. So Father God, I pray this Christmas that we remember the hope that came to this world when heaven touched earth. Amen. I wish you a healthy and peaceful Christmas. <laughs>